Hello hotties, I am Pepin and today I want to look at the TP-Link TAPO C200 security camera. The C2000 is a pretty run-of-the-mill uh, pan-tailed indoor security camera which has detection features for motion and people and crying babies. And in the box you get a camera, a power adapter and some paperwork as well as some mounting hardware. It comes with an app and a cloud subscription but it also supports local recording and ONVIF, which we will talk about more later. And the micro SD cards and the reset button can be found by twisting the lens upwards. So the first thing we'll do is twist it upwards and insert an SD card. Then we can plug it in and let it boot. It appears to do this funny little dance where it calibrates the pan and tilt mechanism and then it settles into a red green blinking pattern, which means it's ready for the setup. Now, I have to admit, this camera is a bit of a disappointment. It appears to do all these local things, but actually, in terms of privacy and home assistant compatibility, I would not recommend this device. It turns out there's no web interface at all, and the only way to set up this device is with the app, which requires a TP-Link account and an internet connection. So, <laughs> let's grit our teeth and get this thing working. The setup is pretty straightforward. We install a TAPO app, create an account, and click through some prompts. After that, we can press plus to add a device, find the C200, and follow the instructions. Personally, I like to connect my local IoT devices to a separate VLAN that blocks their internet access. Um, if you want to see a video on that, subscribe and let me know in the comments. Then I will make a video on how to set up VLANs to block internet access and local access from IoT devices, including ones that do need to have cloud access. Uh, in this case, however, it did cause a little bit of a problem. The first time I paired the device, it failed because my phone didn't connect to the right network. Second time, it got through and I was able to label and name the device. Then I could enter the main app and go to the camera screen and format the SD card. Uh, however, at that point, the live feed did not load and even more concerning, after I exited from the camera back to the main screen, the complete camera disappeared from the app. Gone, nothing. So I redid the whole setup and this time I could see the live feed. So then I proceeded to device settings, advanced settings and camera account. The reason we need the camera account is because we need to set credentials that we can use with third party software like uh, RTSP and ONVIF. So yeah, we need to set that up. However, here I got another error and after going back out, once again, the complete camera vanished from the app. So eventually I logged into my router and disabled the ACL that blocks internet access. And as they say, fourth time is the charm. So then I did the whole setup again. And this time I was able to set account credentials in the camera and see the live stream and everything worked normally. And the camera did not disappear this time. So with that out of the way, we can move on to setting it up in Home Assistant. So while there are official ONVIF and TAPO integration, the ONVIF will not expose all the functionality of your camera, but only the stream and a few other things. And the TAPO one is actually for buttons and switches and things and not for this camera. So for the best result, we need to install a third party integration from uh, HEX. So let me know if you want to do see a video on HEX later, uh, but for now, if you look at the README Office integration, there's a huge warning message that says, okay, don't update your camera because if you update your camera, it will stop working, which to me is a telltale sign of proprietary shenanigans, which I do not appreciate, but for now it should work. So if you go into hacks and search for Tapo camera control, we can click on download and click download again. Then we can go to settings and restart home assistant. After Home Assistant has been restarted, we can go to Device and Services and from there add the TAPO camera control integration. Uh, this will bring up a pop-up and there we have to enter the IP address of the camera. 
which we can obtain from either the Tapo app or a router's web interface. I got it from the router. Next, you have to enter the camera account that we created in the app, uh, which is used to connect with the password. And finally, for some reason, you also need to enter the TP-Link cloud account for some reason, uh, but it seems to be optional, I don't know. And on the next screen, there's a few camera settings, which I've left at the default. And then finally, you can add your camera to a zone. At this point, we can watch and control and automate this camera. But if you go to media and then camera and then the stream, you will see that there is a large delay and no sound there. A workaround for these problems is to use a third-party WebRTC camera integrations, which we can once again install from Hex. So we go to Hex, search for WebRTC and find the camera integration and press download. And then once again, we need to restart Home Assistant. After Home Assistant has restarted, we first need to go back to Devices and Services and add the WebRTC services, leaving everything at the default. We'll need to obtain the entity ID of your stream by going to Settings, Devices and Services, Entities and searching for camera.tapo. Next, we need to refresh the browser, very important, and then go to the dashboard, any dashboard, press Edit, add a card, and search for the web app to see camera card. Here we need to replace the URL with entity and pass the camera stream entity ID that we added. Then press save, done, unmute the stream and have a listen. So this is an example of what the audio video quality of this camera looks like. So that's it. This camera was a bit of a pain in the behind to set up, but in the end the result was kind of okay, I think. So, yep, that's it for now and thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video and all the usual like and subscribe things, of course, and uh, bye!